So, uh, this is uh, how uh, one uh, proves uh, that uh, eta which is defined. Uh, so, eta which is defined as eta of a rectangle equal to a cross uh, rectangle a cross b to be mu of a into nu of b is countably additive. So, let me uh, slowly go through the proof once again. Mm, there is only one small idea involved in it and other is rest is uh, straightforward applications of the earlier results. So, let us write a cross b. So, I am going through the proof once again that a cross b is written as a countable disjoint union of rectangles a n cross b n. And what we want to show that eta of the rectangle a cross b is equal to summation of the uh, measures of the rectangle each rectangle. So, summation over n of eta a n cross b n. So, to prove this what we uh, do is as follows look at the set a cross b. So, fix any element x belonging to a then for any y belonging to b we know that x comma y belongs to a cross b which is nothing but union of a n's. So, that means x comma y will belong to exactly one of them, okay. but which one of them. So, x comma y will belong to that a n comma b n whenever this x belongs to that a n, okay. because x comma y belonging to a n cross b n implies x must belong to a n and y must belong to b n. That means, what we are saying is x comma y belongs to a cross b if and only if x belongs to a n and for that x the y should belong to b n. Because x is fixed, so that n is fixed. So, what are those n's which are fixed? So, y belongs to b n provided x belongs to a n. So, for a fixed x collect together those n's. So, find the set s of x all those indices n say that x belongs to a n. See a n's are not disjoint. So, x can belong to more than one of the a n's. Okay. So, look at those if x belongs to a n, okay, but if for, for a fixed x it will belong to only one of them. So, if x belongs to a n then y will belong to b n. So, as x varies okay, over as x varies uh, over a for every fixed x you will get a collection of b n's. So, what are those b n's? Those b n's are uh, indexed by n belonging to s of x say so that x belongs to a n and this union is a disjoint union. So, for every x fix in A, we can decompose B into a disjoint union of B n's over those n's say that n belongs to S of x. This being a disjoint union, because A n's B n's uh, are disjoint, we get the, our first uh, uh, inequality, first equality that for any fix x in A, nu of B is summation nu of B n's over those n's which belong to s of x. Okay. And now, we observe that equivalently this thing I can, we can write it as nu of b, I can multiply it by the indicator function of a, right? because x belongs to a. So, this will be equal to 1. And this nu of b n, okay, I can multiply if x belongs to a n, that means n will belong to s of x. So, I can multiply here by the indicator function of a n if n belongs to s of x. And if if x does not belong to uh, a n that means, it cannot belong to any one of the a. So, this all the remaining terms here will be 0 and all the remaining this side is also equal to 0. So, what we are saying is uh, for any x in a I can write this is equal to this and this equation makes sense whenever x does not belong to a also, because if x does not belong to a this side is equal to 0 and that side uh, x does not belong to a. So, it does not belong to any one of the a n. So, all the terms are 0. So, this equation first we can write it as indicator function of a times x nu of b is equal to summation of chi a n s. And now, we realize that not only this equation is valid for x belonging to a, this equation is valid for all x in x. So, once that is observed, so that is what is observed here. So, what we get is that the equation chi of a x nu of b is equal to um, the summation chi of a n nu of b n for all x. 
Then now this is the equation about non-negative measurable functions. So left hand side is a non-negative measurable function, which we can realize as a limit of non-negative measurable functions, namely the partial sums of this series, and apply monoton convergence theorem. So that will give us that the integral of the left hand side is equal to summation of the. So I can take the integral sign inside by monoton convergence theorem, and say that integral of uh, chi a x nu b d mu y is nothing but integral of the summation. And so here is the application of uh, the monoton convergence theorem. I can take this integral inside, so that is equal to summation of integral of indicator functions. And now it's just matter of writing down the values of this. Nu of b n is a constant, so goes out. So this integral is nothing but mu of a n. So and that nu of b n and the left hand side. Uh, this was uh, integral of chi e of a nu of b nu of b is a constant, so that is integral of mu of uh, chi of a with respect to mu, so that is mu of a. So that gives us that eta of a cross b is equal to uh, summation eta of a n cross b n whenever a cross b is a disjoint union of rectangles. So that proves that uh, uh, this is uh, eta is a uh, eta is a uh, countably additive function. So, what we have gotten is uh, eta is a countably additive function. So, let us just observe. So, what we got is we got eta defined on a cross b 0 to infinity by eta of a cross b equal to mu of a nu of b is a measure. We got that this is a, a measure on the semi algebra. So, this is important on the semi algebra A times B. So, implies by our general extension theory via outer measures and so on, we can extend, we can define eta tilde on a times b uh, define eta uh, a measure eta tilde a measure and eta tilde of a cross b to be equal to eta of a cross b. That means, this eta can be extended by outer measures to the sigma algebra generated by a cross b the semi algebra a cross b. And if you recall we had said that this uh, uh, extension will be unique provided this eta is a sigma finite measure. So, we claim we claim eta is sigma finite if mu and nu are sigma finite. So, we want to show next that if a and b uh, if mu and nu are sigma finite. So, let us assume. So, if mu sigma finite. So, that implies I can write x as a disjoint union of sets x i 1 to infinity each x i in the sigma algebra a and mu of x i finite for every i. And similarly, nu sigma finite implies I can write y as disjoint union of sets y j, where each y j is an element in the sigma algebra b and nu of b j is finite. But then the, this implies we can write x cross y as disjoint union of x i's cross disjoint union of y j's. And now, it is just a simple matter to set the uh, inequality, equality namely this is same as the unions over i unions over j of rectangles x i cross y j. Right? Because if x comma y belongs here, that means x belongs to the union x i's and y belongs to union y j. So, that means x will belong to only one of x i 
and only to one of y j. So, it will belong here and conversely. So, this is a disjoint union and now we only have to observe the fact that. So, x cross y has been decomposed uh, has been decomposed into a disjoint union of sets x i cross y j and we only note that eta of x i cross y j it is a rectangle. So, its measure is mu of x i times mu of y j and both of them being finite. So, this is a, a finite quantity. So, x cross y is written as a disjoint union of sets x i cross y j and each piece has got finite um, measure. So, that implies eta is sigma finite. So, the measure eta is uh, sigma finite on the rectangles and hence has a, a unique extension to the sigma algebra. So, this is what uh, we wanted to prove that uh, eta uh, that extension uh, is also uh, sigma finite. So, general extension theory gives me uh, a unique. Uh, so, uh, that mu and nu are sigma finite. So, that implies x is a disjoint union, y is a disjoint union. So, we can write uh, x cross y as uh, a disjoint union of the rectangles x i cross y j. That is what I just now illustrated and each piece has got uh, a finite uh, measure. So, by that process we get a uh, eta is sigma finite on rectangles. So, by extension theory eta can be extended uniquely. So, that is an important thing eta can be extended uniquely to a measure on a uh, on the product sigma algebra. So, that for rectangles it is the uh, product. So, uh, this is uh, the measure uh, eta uh, which is defined on a times b on the product sigma algebra is called the product uh, measure and is normally denoted by uh, mu cross nu. So, uh, so let us uh, uh, summarize what we have done. Uh, we started with the two measure spaces x a mu and uh, y b nu and for the product set x cross y we first define the rectangles namely sets of the type a uh, cross b where a belongs to the sigma algebra a and y belongs to the sigma algebra b. So, that gives us sets of uh, subsets of x cross y called measurable rectangles they only form a uh, semi algebra. So, we extend uh, uh, we generate the sigma algebra by this semi algebra of rectangles and call that as the product sigma algebra denoted by a uh, with circle cross uh, a times b. And now, given measures mu on the al sigma algebra a and a measure nu on the sigma algebra uh, b, we want to define a measure on the product sigma algebra. So, that is done uh, by defining uh, the product uh, for a re, uh, defining the, the new measure first on rectangles. So, eta of the rectangle a cross b is defined as the product of mu of a and nu of b and we show that this is a uh, measure. So, this becomes a measure on the semi algebra of rectangles and if it is sigma finite that means, if we assume that the given measures mu and nu are sigma finite then this extends uniquely to a measure on the product sigma algebra a cross b and that uh, measure is called the uh, product uh, measure product of the measures mu and nu. So, given two measure spaces x a mu and y b nu which are sigma finite we get the product measure space x cross y the sigma algebra a cross b. Uh, generated by the rectangles and the product measure mu cross nu go obtained via the extension theory. So, this is uh, uh, the product measure space uh, constructed as just now said. So, now uh, the next problem we want to analyze is the following namely this product measure mu cross nu that we have gotten okay, is obtained via extension theory but it does not tell us how does one compute the product measure mu cross nu of a set in a cross b. So, that uh, is not uh, indicated because 
we are making use of the extension theory. So, next problem that we want to analyze is the following. So, namely, so we have got the product measure space x cross y, the product sigma algebra a times b and the product measure mu cross nu. So, let us take a set E contained in x cross y, which is of course, E is an element in A times B. So, mu cross nu of this set E is defined. So, the question is can we compute, can we compute this quantity mu cross nu of E using mu and nu. So, that is the question and there uh, let us just recall something from our uh, elementary calculus. Supposing in the plane we have got a set which looks like the following, it looks like this is a set. So, this is a set E which looks like the following namely here is a point A and here is a point B. Okay. So, the set E looks like, so let us just write what does E look like. E is equal to all x cross x comma y, so that x belongs, x belongs between A and B and y. So, at any point x if I look at y, this is the portion of y. So, it starts with the green uh, boundary. So, y is uh, bigger than or equal to some function f of x that is a green curve and less than or equal to here is g of x. So, this is what we call in uh, uh, calculus or elementary analysis uh, uh, sets of uh, type 1 and for such sets, for such sets we can we can find out what is the area. So, area of the set E if you recall from calculus it can be obtained as you look at this difference height what is this uh, what is this height. So, that is nothing but g of x minus f of x and integrate that from A to B d x. So, Riemann integral as an application of Riemann integration we do that we define it equal to this, but now let us rewrite this. This I can write it as uh, this is a Riemann integral. So, Riemann integral I can write integral over a b of d lambda with respect to the Lebesgue measure and what is g x minus f x that is precisely the Lebesgue measure of this Lebesgue measure of this height. So, Lebesgue measure of let me write as e x. What is E x? E x is equal to all y such that x comma y belongs to E, which is same as all y such that uh, y is between f x and g x. Right? So, that set I am writing it as follows. So, I am writing as Lebesgue measure of a notation called E x. So, you can think of that look at this set x, let look at that uh, um, look at that uh, uh, set E to find its area, we are just adding up the areas of the small strips. So, I can think it as that way and that is what this integral uh, seems to indicate. So, we would like to generalize this in the case of our construction, the same idea we want to generalize it. So, here is what we want to do. So, given given a set E in x cross y for x belonging to x fix, let us look at E x that is. So, here is abstract now, x is abstract set, y is an e some abstract set. So, look at all those points y belonging to y, x section is the part of the horizontal line and the e x section is part of the vertical line. So, as I said E x is called the 
section of E at x or just the x section of E and similarly E y, this at E y is called the section of E at y or just the y section of uh, E. So, here are some simple properties uh, we want to verify for these uh, sections. So, first of all we want to verify and uh, let us look at some examples first. Let us take a set E which actually looks like a rectangle. So, in this x cross y let us take actually a rectangle A cross B where A belongs to A and B belongs to B. So, then for any x in A if for what are the points y say that x comma y will belong to E that is means y must belong to B. So, E x the x section of E for a rectangle A cross B is nothing but B the set B itself if x belongs to A and if x does not belong to A then the point x comma y is never going to belong to E. So, the x section is empty set. So, here is a simple observation that for a rectangle A cross B the x section is equal to the set B if x belongs to A and it is empty set if x does not belong to A. Similarly, the y section of E or the section of y at a point y in y. So, all x say that x comma y belongs to. So, if y belongs to B then for all x in A x comma y is going to belong to E. So, that means the y section of E is equal to A if y belongs to B and it is empty set if y does not belong to E. So, for rectangles it are it these are very easy to compute what are the uh, sections. For a rectangle A cross B the x section uh, for x belonging to A is B otherwise empty. Similarly, the y section is equal to A if y belongs to B otherwise it is empty. Now, let us look at another example. So, let us take a measurable space x A and look at the ordered pairs x comma t. So, t belongs to R such that this t lies between the evaluated indicator function of A at x. So, we are looking at the ordered pairs x comma t such that for every x t lies between 0 and A okay, and x belongs to x. So, what are the uh, what are the uh, sections of this set E? This is a subset of uh, A cross B. Okay. Uh, and where B is Y is the real line. So, it is a subset of X cross R. We want to find its sections. So, let us observe that for a point X in A, if X belongs to A, then this indicator function of A the value will be equal to 1. So, T will be between 0 and 1. So, if X belongs to A, then T will be between 0 and 1. So, the section is going to be the interval 0 1. Uh, 1 not included and if x does not belong to A, if x does not belong to A then this is going to be 0. So, t is going to be the singleton 0. So, the section uh, if x belongs to A, so the section depends on uh, whether x belongs to A or not. So, the section of E at a point x is equal to the int interval closed interval uh, 0 open at 1 uh, in R if x belongs to A otherwise it is the, the 0 set or uh, another way of looking at this is the following that the set E I can write it as A cross the interval open uh, uh, closed at 0 and open at 1 union A complement of this A complement cross the singleton 0. This is another way of writing the same set E as I explained just now. So, the section so now is a union of two disjoint rectangles. So, section in the first case when x belongs to A section is going to be 0 1 and in the second case the section is going to be uh, the singleton 0 if x does not belong to A. So, these are the x sections. We can similarly find the y sections. So, for y belonging to uh, 0 to 1 that means y is the real line. So, for a real number between the uh, closed at 0 and open at 1 interval it is going to be A. Okay at uh, 0. Okay. So, and if y is equal to 0 then this is going to be the whole space x 
and empty set. So, this is uh, easy computation from this it follows. So, this is how one computes the sections of uh, these sets. So, uh, these sections are going to play important role uh, in computing the measure of a uh, set E in the product space. So, in the next lecture, we will analyze uh, the x sections, the y sections, various properties of uh, these sections under complements, intersections and unions and then uh, show that each section for a uh, uh, set E in the product sigma algebra, each section is again a uh, appropriately measurable set whose measure can be defined and then you can take the measure of that and define the um, functions and compute the integral of the product uh, set uh, product uh, uh, compute the product measure of the set E. So, we will continue the study of sections and their implications uh, for product measures in the next lecture. Thank you.